goat's milk soap. And on rainy, wet days, those are often days that I make a lot of soap as well on those days. So uh, we make the soap and then we have to let it sit and cure for four weeks. And then we have to wrap it. <laughs> and by we, I mean me. <laughs> I get to wrap all the soap and label all the soap. And it's an absolute blessing. And what that curing time is simply um, letting it sit and letting the water evaporate out. And so it lends to a nice, harder bar. Uh, the process of saponification happens very quickly after you mix the oil with the lye, that uh, lye liquid. That oil bonds with the lye liquid right in the process of making the soap. And so that four weeks is not to make sure that the lye is safe. It is really just to make sure that moisture evaporates out of the soap and lends to a longer um, using bar, a harder bar in the shower. So that one of our goat's milk soap bars lasts almost a month in the shower, which is so awesome. And here, oh gosh, I can't even tell you. I think we've got rosemary, peppermint. I don't even know what all kinds of soaps I have here wrapping. But one thing I also love about when I'm wrapping soaps, I just sit at the, the kitchen, Middle Island, and wrap soaps. Oftentimes, I'll wrap soaps in the kitchen after I bring the dogs in from being outside for a little bit because their paws are a little bit muddy and I don't want them in on the carpet. And the kitchen floor is a lot easier to scrub and clean. And so I'll just hang out in the kitchen with the dogs. I think in this video, there are a few dogs just kind of laying about. Uh, we had probably went, gone on a long walk or something. And so I figured I had some time to hang out in the kitchen with them and I just wanted to wrap some soaps. And so it's a good time to be in the kitchen just because the dogs are in there with their muddy paws. We all know the, the muddy paws things with dogs. Us dog owners are not fans of the mud. We just aren't. And another thing I also love about when I'm stationary and doing a project like this, when I'm sitting in one spot, the boys, my two sons, tend to gravitate to me. So you'll notice throughout this video here of me watching, uh, me wrapping the soaps, that my son is just off camera. I think you'll be able to see him in a minute or he walks by in the video. I don't even know um, where in the video. But this almost this whole time I was wrapping soaps and I sped it up. So I was wrapping soaps for almost an hour, hour and a half. And I sped it up so that you didn't have to watch me do soaps for an hour and a half. But the whole time he was just standing there, we were chatting about college, chatting about work, chatting about some different things. And so it was just, I don't know, it's just so awesome when the boys gravitate towards me when I'm stationary. Most of the time I'm flitting about like a moth, um, this project, that project, this, that. I'm seldom stationary for any length of time. And so when I am, the boys notice and they just come and they start chatting. They know they've got my um, undivided attention. So even though I'm wrapping soaps, it's pretty methodical. It's pretty easy. And uh, the boys know that they have my attention. And so we're chatting and giving life advice and getting advice from my son. And so it's Oh, communication is just amazing that way. It's a back and forth. It's a two-way street. You can learn so much from your kids. Just listen to them uh, and they can learn so much from you. And so when you listen to your kids, it teaches them how to listen. It teaches them how to have that back and forth. And so they can listen better to you. And oh gosh, I just love it. So I got a ton of soaps wrapped this day and it's good. It's absolutely awesome. Okay. So we've got muffin tins. Usually I have three of these six ones, but we made cornbread muffins. And so those are dirty. So we've got to wash those. So I just got the big ones and we'll just put six balls in and there's treats in. The big ones, I put treats in all of them. They'll get six free treats. Echo is going to get that small one um, and she'll only get six treats. And I got a big bag of tennis balls. I think there's 18 in here. And I think it was like 10 bucks for 18. And so that's cheaper than doing it like at the pet store. Um, getting like specific dog tennis balls. I think those are like two dollars each, which would be crazy. <gasps> it was over on the thing. Okay, there we go. So you will see, we will record each of the dogs. Hi, Nikita. There's Nikita. Our dogs today that will be doing this are Nikita, Athena. There's a vacuum cleaner cord. I was vacuuming. Where's the vacuum? There's the vacuum. And then Echo Bug. She was sleeping in the kennel. <laughs> Echo, we're going to do a treat. Okay, are we ready? So while I'm giving each dog their tray, the other dogs have to wait. They can't steal the tray from the one. So I'm going to give Echo her tray first. Are you ready for your tray, Echo? Nikki, back. Nikki, good. Nikki, over here. Good. Nikki, good. And then Echo sits. Good sits. Athena, good. Over here. Good. 
And I really, when I put the tray down, I don't want any of the other dogs to be around. So, nope, don't get in there. Someone stole a treat out. Nick, Athena, come here. Good. So you can see Echo's sniffing, and she's usually pretty quick to get them out. Um, we'll give her, oh, look, she's getting one out. I just wanted to, there, she got the ball out, and then she's got to get the treat out of there. That's just what she does. So, no, Athena. <laughs> Athena stole a treat out of here. While my back was look uh, back to Echo, Athena stole a treat out of there. It looks like somebody stole three treats out of here. <laughs> so the next one will be Nikki, and Nikki's the next fastest. I should have given Athena hers first. She's the slowest. Athena, wait. Nikki. Nikki, Nikki. Ready? There's yours, Nikki. Yep, Nikki's super fast with this. Athena. And I'm going to have Athena come over here. Can you get through there? Athena. Good. And I'm going to have Athena. She is the slowest. She doesn't always get it right away. So look, Nikki has moved the balls. <laughs> and she's, look at, oh, she's so good at it. And Athena is first getting, hi Axel. <laughs> I'll get yours in a minute, Axel. Athena is first uh, getting all the treats out of the empty ones. And then it really takes her a while. Oh, she got one off, Jackson. She got a tennis ball off. That's faster than she's ever done it before. Usually it takes her like a good five minutes to get the first tennis ball off. Axel, let me get you a treat. Hold on, love. Hi, Axel. Let me get you a treat, love. Ready? There's your treat. Yeah, I'll get you more in just a minute. And I think Nikki's probably got all the treats out. I don't know if she's got it out of that one. Yep, she does. <laughs> Echo, of course, has got all of her treats out. Good girl. Good girl. And Nikki, or uh, Athena, is still working on hers. Did I call Nikki Athena? I don't know if I did. There we go. Good girl, Athena. Get your tennis balls out. Find all your treats. I'm guessing Athena still hasn't found those three. Oh, there she found one. I'm guessing those two she still hasn't found. She's fast today, Jackson. Good girl, Athena. Nikki, leave it. Good girl. And leave it just means back away from whatever I told you to leave alone. Good girl, Athena. Well done. I think she's got a new world record, Jackson. Good girl. I'm going to check that ball. I don't know if there's a treat under that one. Can I see if there's a treat in this one? Nope, no treat in that one. It's all gone. Good girls. Now all I've got to do is teach them to bring me all the tennis balls for cleanup. I was working on that one day, and yeah, I got frustrated because they just wouldn't. Alrighty, and another rainy day, wet, muddy day activity is putting things in planter boxes. So I had a reason to do this. I had a ton of bulbs that I had gotten on clearance from Tractor Supply. They were originally $10.99 for this bag of bulbs, and I got it for 50 cents. So absolutely incredible. And the reason I got them so cheap is because they are out of season. I got these in January. This is not the time that you want to plant bulbs. You want to plant bulbs in the fall, of course. What I'm going to do with these, and daffodils and crocus is what I have here, what I'm going to do with these is I'm gonna put them in some planter boxes and I'm gonna bring them inside. And I am going to grow these inside. Once they have bloomed and flowered and, and died back, then I will plant them outside somewhere. Um, I don't know, but I have a ton of bulbs that I planted outside as well. I don't know if they'll survive. I just couldn't help myself with that deal. I had to get a ton. But these I went ahead and I planted. You can see I'm using the back of my truck as my workbench. And I don't know why I'm not branding circle. They are not sponsoring this video. I just happened to have uh, stopped up at the mailbox and gotten our packages. One of the packages was a circle box that had um, all of our wonderful circle cartridges for our water bottles. And so it just happened to be in the back of the truck. I hadn't taken it in yet. But yeah, I'm just going to put um, probably four or five of these planter boxes inside somewhere where I can see the beauty of the spring bulbs come up and they will come up quickly. And then, like I said, I'll just transplant them out somewhere and it doesn't matter if they do well or not, we'll see. But these are gonna be meant for inside. So you'll notice too, as the tripod moves while I'm making this video it is because I have my wonderful two goats that keep escaping out of their enclosure and just have the massive 
FOMO, the fear of missing out. You guys have heard me talk about it before. And it is just that fear of missing out. My cats have it. My dogs have it. My goats have it. All of my animals have it. And it makes them want to be in my space. So here we have Elliot, who is saying hello. And we have Miss Moonshine, who is also, I call her Moon for short, who is also saying hello. And they literally just want to say hello. And they just hung around me this whole time. And we're just bumping into the tripod and sniffing around and just being crazy. So I'm watering in these bulbs really well. And I'll leave these out on the tailgate uh, for a couple hours. So here you'll see um, I got another planter box, a planter box and a planter pot. And I put them here next to our garage door because our cats have been using that specific spot as a litter box. And it's driving me insane. And so I just just put a planter box there and a planter pot to hopefully deter them from using that spot as a litter box. It is so annoying when my husband comes home, parks in the garage, comes out of the garage, and the first thing he smells, first thing he is greeted by um, coming home from work is cat pee. And that is, oh, it's so gross. And so we just need to break the habit. And you can see I watered everything in and got a ton of dirt on the garage there. Our garage just needs a good painting anyway, so don't be too judgmental on that. I hope they don't see this this um, and I put more bulbs in here daffodils tulips I think some crocus I can't remember what all I put in there I wrote it down but um, I'm hoping they don't see this planter as one big nice litter box <laughs> if they use this as a litter box I don't know what I'm gonna do it's I don't know what I'm going to do alrighty howdy folks it is January I have my supervisor here Dose says hello and then he walks away as soon as I turn on the camera so we are getting our California soft neck garlic in the ground. So it is soggy, it is wet, it is the end of January. These are not uh, good conditions to be planting garlic. You should get it in, in October. Um, and yeah. Oh, hi, you know. Yes, that's not me though. I did not do that. And so all or nothing, we don't, we're, we're just gonna try it. I have two supervisors, Uno and Dos brothers. Um, so what I do, is you can see I've got grass, I've got mud. Um, I don't have a bed prepared for my garlic because I'm me. I don't, don't, are you pooping? No, you're just rubbing. I was like, are you pooping in the hole? Cause that would be frustrating, Uno. You are adorable, but that's not helpful. Oh, I love my cats. Um, you're gonna be filthy. Whatever. Okay, so what I do is I lay down pizza boxes. We get pizza, oh, a couple times a month. Every Friday is our takeout night. And so I save my pizza boxes because I seem to find a use for everything. And so what I do is I lay out for this garlic, I lay out pizza boxes in a line and I cut uh, slots. You can see there at the end, I cut X's and then I kind of just open them up with my fingers and get some soil out of the way. In this case, get some mud out of the way. And then I put some of our beautifully rich, dark composted soil in. And so, and then, okay, so then I put the soil in and then I just kind of very lightly so that I can put the garlic bulb down in. Um, I put the soil in very lightly. And then I cover it up with a mound of, of soil like this. And then I'll come back and do probably another just really light thing of soil all the way down the row. And then cover it with straw just so I know where my garlic is. And this is our California soft neck in this row. And so let me see if I can show you while holding the phone with a very dirty gloved hand on one side. Um, let me just see if I can show you how we get the garlic in. I mean, it's not hard, folks. It's not rocket science. Let's just see if we can do it, though. So I pull a garlic bulb out, and you have the root end, and then you have the shoot end. Uh, this root end down here, that's gonna be the end that goes down in the garlic clove. So yeah, so excuse the camera work, but I have a gloved hand that is absolutely filthy um, holding the phone. And so I push it down in there like that, and you can see that's okay cats you're not helping <laughs> uno i love you so much do you understand how you're not helping how you are not look at see yeah how you're not helping tap the dirt in oh my goodness and look at all those seeds on you you're going to get all those seeds in my soil and it's going to grow those plants 
I love you. Oh, and your brother Dose is helping tremendously too. So then I put that garlic down and then I'm just gonna cover it with a mound of soil like that. And we're gonna do that all the way down. And then we're gonna do another row for our hard neck garlic. I give up guys, I give up. <laughs> And look, they don't care that my glove is dirty. They're like, love me, love me. I don't want to love you too much because you are depositing those seeds all over. I'm going to have to brush you like crazy to get those out, love. I do love you. Do you hear that purring? Oh, I love our cats. They're just incredible. Where's your guys' other brother, Trace? Huh? They're so happy just to be here. I love them. Okay, I forgive you <laughs> for being the most annoying cat while I try to garden. This is why sometimes it can be tough to garden. All of my animals have FOMO, fear of missing out. All of the animals. The goats were at the gate, like, I wanna come in, I wanna come in, cause their enclosure is right there on the other side of that. Um, is their enclosure it's separated by a fence but yeah okay i've got to finish this i love you distracted you get me so distracted all right so i'll probably show you guys a picture when it's all done all right and here you can see too we've got all the straw up on and this is where all of that soft neck garlic is here the first area i got the one row of pizza hut boxes or pizza boxes some a zip some pizza hut doesn't really matter and then a second row right next to them of some more so in total i think i had something like 40 bulbs maybe um or 40 cloves i'm sorry 40 individual cloves and right there is where the marker is of where the soft neck and the soft neck ended and the hard neck started so to the left is the soft neck and to the um, right that california soft neck and to the right is the hard neck and that Siberian hard neck, I think I called it Russian hard neck in another part of a video, but I got another two rows um, or a full row and then another half a row. I had about the same clothes or same um, cloves of garlic for that hard neck, the Siberian hard neck. And so we'll see how that does. I also had some more bulbs. So I'm like, I want some flowers. So I planted some flowers, I think some tulips maybe. I also did some tulips and some daffodils um, along the fence line of this wonderful secondary garden that we have and now they are on the inside of the garden so I'm hoping the goats don't eat them goats don't mind or they don't like daffodils but they love tulip tulip heads tulip leaves they love tulips switching gears to dishes <laughs> this is another rainy day activity that I love to do you see I have a dishwasher that I use as a drying rack um, it's an everyday but when I have uh, a forecast of wet weather coming up, I tend to save up some of my dishes um, and just take a little break for a day or two and then just get a huge pile mounted up because I know I'm going to be inside. I love this dish rag. My grandma gave it to me. It's got little coffee cups on it and it's just the handiest thing. But doing dishes is one of those things that for me, it's relaxing. Um, I hate seeing a pile of dishes and so doing them is relaxing, but also it's just, I don't know, there's something about it. And I, of course, sped it up so that you don't have to watch, you know, it's just satisfying to see it go by a little bit more quicker. Uh, you see the shot glass? I am not taking shots. That is for my daily elderberry syrup. But there are benefits of hand washing your dishes. So many folks, they they go for the dishwasher. They think that's the way to go. I want to do a dishwasher. But there are studies that show that actually hand washing dishes, and there's a certain way to do it, but hand washing dishes um, is better. It's healthier. It's There's a couple different things. Let me, real quick, this pan, let me show you something I do. I get a little scrubby brush on the rivets part where the handle is connected. There's like those little rivets or those little bolts. And I can't stand food getting stuck up in there. And so I will scrub those with a little scrubby brush every time with all of my pots and pans. I just wanted to mention that. So there's some benefits of hand washing, not just um, the relaxation part of it, but there's actually a study found that the clean scores for dishwashing machines range from like 83 to 90. So 83 to 90% clean from dishwashers. But 
the clean score for manual washing using, once again, these best practices, which I'll show, tell you what those are in a minute, but 95%, consistently 95% when you use the best practices. So the best practices are soaking and scrubbing dishes in a base of hot water, basin of hot water or a sink of hot water, rinsing them in a basin of cold water, and then air drying them. So what I do, as you can see, is I soak in the hot soapy water, and instead of having a basin or a sink of clean water I just rinse them off so you'll see my sink here is really there's one that's got all the dishes and that's my washing with the other one is actually supposed to be empty but it had a bunch of food particles that were clogging up the little strainer thing and so I have to get that all down so it'll actually flow down and you'll see I'll get the strainer out and there's tons of food in the strainer we have a strainer on both sides of the sink so that no food gets down into the septic system I'm telling you a garbage disposal and food into the septic system is the worst thing ever so look at all that food in the strainer that all goes in the trash and that is just the worst thing for your septic system. You do not want a ton of food in your septic system. It throws off the balance of the bacteria. It's just horrible. And so I go and I throw it away and I come back to do the dishes. Um, but I cleaned out really well as, as well. And so the best practices, once again, I follow the soaking and the washing in one basin, one tub, uh, one side of the sink with hot, hot water, which I love. That makes my hands all warm in the winter. I actually rinse with hot water on the other side. And so what's kind of funny is this day Jackson came home from work and if we have like kind of three suppers. <laughs> we have one um, for me and Kevin oftentimes when the boys are working and then we have one for when Jackson gets home and then one later when Gunner gets home. But I decided to make some tilapia and some broccoli and this is just a steamer bag that I use. I soak my heads of broccoli in water for about 20 minutes and then I cut them up and I put this in this in them in the steamer bag, which is so awesome. A full bag of broccoli steams in about two minutes, 30 seconds and it steams perfectly. It's still crunchy, but it's just perfectly steamed in these uh, steamer bags. And I think it's Ziploc that makes these ones. I don't know, it's in the Ziploc aisle, I know that. And so, oh, I just love steamed broccoli with some lemon on it. And tonight we had tilapia, steamed broccoli, and some rice, which is one of Jackson's favorite meals. And I can whip this up in about, oh, less than 10 minutes. The rice takes 15 minutes to cook, but uh, 10 minutes for the, the fish and the broccoli. The broccoli takes two minutes, 30 seconds. And so I put the rice in. And then when the rice is five minutes in, then I'll start the fish. Fish takes about 10 minutes. And it's such a yummy and easy meal. And I can't remember what me and Kevin had. Me and Kevin had something. And then I had second supper with Jackson this night with tilapia and uh, broccoli and rice. And then third supper when Gunner got home, because Gunner gets, doesn't get home till like nine o'clock at night. And if he goes to the gym, then it's even later at like 10. I can't remember what he had, but I didn't have anything with him. It was too late. I was tired. But here's the tilapia. I just use our um, kind of our knockoff Old Bay seasoning. I make my own Old Bay, which tastes just like the Old Bay seasoning. And I love, love just sauteing up tilapia like this. I usually use our cast iron and I can't remember why I didn't use it this night. Um, I don't know why I didn't, but I almost always use cast iron for our fish. I love fish in a cast iron um, pan. It's just absolutely the best. And then we also have rice. I have this Pampered Chef rice cooker that I have had for so many years, and I just adore it. One cup of dry rice I put in with a cup and a half of water. I put it in for five minutes regular time and then 10 minutes of half power. Uh, regular power and then half power. So five minutes of regular power, 10 minutes of half power in the microwave. And it is absolutely perfect. It makes a ton of rice. So here I'm actually opening up the circle bottle box. <laughs> we get a monthly um, order of circle cartridges for me and Jackson and Gunner were the ones that drink these circle waters. And I just love doing it this way. It's so much cheaper than buying them individually at Walmart and it's just a recurring subscription that happens every month you can uh you can um pause it i was trying to think what word you can pause it if you need to or change the dates or whatever and so I, when i get our box i just organize the boys have one box that they all get theirs out of and then i have another one because there's some that i just don't want them drinking all of mine <laughs> and so if they like a kind i'll get it for them but i have a box for me and a box for them and so i always tell them you know what do you want but yeah, so while the food was cooking, that's what I was doing was with those circle bottles. And then you saw the meal. 
And now I'm back to dishes. <laughs> After cooking Second Supper, I am back to dishes. And guess what? There's more dishes from Second Supper. <laughs> isn't it amazing how that happens? And isn't it just so satisfying to just see the pile of dishes whittled down? <laughs> It's just, it's so satisfying for me and it's got to be satisfying for you too, I hope. And that yellow thing, that miter box, I use that to cut my soaps. My soaps, loaves fit in there perfectly and I can measure out like a one inch or if I want bigger bars, uh, one and a half inches. And so that's what that is. And I wash that after I get done cutting soaps with it and it washes up real easy. But that's what people um, might be wondering what that yellow miter box is doing by my dish sink. I did used to use the dishwasher when we first moved in, but I couldn't stand it. It wasn't getting my dishes clean. I just, I didn't, there was so much I couldn't put in it as well. I would never put my um, pots and pans in there. I don't like putting glasses in there. They come out cloudy. And so I just didn't love it. But there are some really good other reasons why uh, it is good to hand wash your dishes. From returntonow.net, it talks about uh, people who hand wash their dishes have better gut flora and fewer allergies. There's a two, 2015 study of a thousand Swedish children, and it found that those parents who washed the dishes by hand were significantly less likely to develop eczema, asthma, and hay fever. So the kids of these parents that wash the dishes by hands um, significantly less likely to develop eczema, asthma, and hay fever. So these findings are the latest to support the hygiene hypothesis, which says that the sterile environments of children in developed countries, which is like America, Sweden, so on and so forth, are contributing to allergies. We have such a sterile environment that our guts, that our bodies are not getting any exposure to germs. So thanks to antibacterial soaps, hand sanitizers, pasteurization, and super hot water, children aren't exposed to as many bacteria and other microorganisms as they used to be which is depriving their immune system training to recognize microbial friend from foe. Like I was talking about before, hand-washing dishes can also be meditative and stress relieving. Another study found that washing dishes mindfully could be therapeutic, increasing feelings of well-being and decreasing anxiety. So there's two ways I wash dishes. One way is when I wanna zone out and watch a YouTube video or listen to music or just whatever. Another way is when I want to reduce my stress and anxiety. And those are two very different dishes dishwashing experiences. So when I want to reduce my stress and anxiety, then I don't put on a YouTube video with that background noise. I don't put on music. But what I do do is that I, I actually think about the sensory experiences, like the act of the warmth of water, the feel of the dishes and the smell of the soap, the sound of the water. I concentrate on these things, these just little little intricate things. I concentrate on them and I think about it and I often pray during that time as well. And so I just kind of shut off all that background noise and just be, this sounds so silly, but like be one with the dishes. <laughs> and I pray for friends. I pray for my family. I talk to God. Those are the times that I just really am very introspective and I absolutely I love that time that just, it seems very private, very private time, um, which is so good. And so also, moving on to another benefit of hand washing dishes, hand washing dishes can save water if done right. So hand washing dishes where you're, you know, washing in that tub of soapy water and then rinsing and then putting it in the air, um, in somewhere to air dry, that's the way to do it. If you just have your water running the whole time, my goodness, I, I can't even fathom you doing that, but that just wastes so much water and you don't want to do that. And so, you know, just shutting the water off after you're done rinsing, that's a good way to do it. And that's probably why they say to to fill up a basin with that water for rinsing. But I find that that water just gets icky pretty quickly um, because if I leave any little food particles on, I, I mean, I dip it in a basin of water because I used to do that. And I dip it in a basin of water, um, it will come off in that and then that water just gets icky. When I rinse it off and it just goes into the sink uh, without actually soaking it in a second basin, then it doesn't collect any of that food particle, any of those food particles. So those are just a couple reasons why I absolutely love hand washing dishes. And I will always hand wash dishes. <laughs> so many dishes. And here we have our kefir. You might've been wondering what these are. This is my water kefir. And I did start these kefir grains with some backstrap molasses, uh, some molasses and sugar. And so that's why it's so dark. 
And now I want to get these black marks off of my sink. And so I am going to show you my secret to getting these black marks from either on my cast iron pans or from regular pans or pots or whatever. I have these Spiri sponges. I have one that's fairly newer, one that's older. And the fairly newer one is what I use for like my cooktop and for different things, my counters. This one is the one I use. The older one is the one I use for my sink or when I really want to get down and dirty with uh, one. But I get that cleaning paste on it, which I absolutely love. And that one tub of cleaning paste lasts me almost a year, which is so awesome. But I get the sponge wet. I dip it in and then I scrub, scrub, scrub. And those Spiri sponges are perfect for um, also the, the glassware, the glass uh, uh, range tops. I was trying to think what they're called. Like the range tops, you can use those Spiri sponges on those as well. But this is mostly to get the black scuff marks off my sink. You'll see this sink is a little bit discolored. I need to just fill it with some bleach, um, the stained coloring. These are, this is an old sink, old, old sink. It's been here the entire time we've lived here since 2009. And it was there even, of course, before then. And so you see how amazing that looks after using that cleaning paste. All those black scuff marks are gone, which is so awesome. And it looks so good. So another thing also is I just look around on these rainy, muddy, wet days to see what needs to be done in the house. I had a pot of lotion that I had made this day and I had filled a bunch of orders with the different scents that people needed, the different essential oils that people needed, and I had some leftovers. So I always keep that in a bag that just marked unscented so that I can pull from it at any time to add scent, add essential oils for orders coming up. And so I had made like a quadruple batch this day and that pot was full. And so you see, I don't have a whole lot left. I probably have about four pounds left. And so I'm going to get it all in a Ziploc bag so I can store it and then just pull out from there when I need to fill an order and then make another batch as I need to. But these things, I mean, there's just always something to do. There's just always something little, something big. It just depends on how much I want to tackle at any given time. There's always something to do. Isn't that crazy? I love it. So thank you guys so much for joining me on another day, uh, a muddy, wet day, kind of what I do inside. And thank you so much again for just coming along on this ride. Let me know what you think of these day in life, or if you'd rather have me um, just do one subject of teaching you how to do something or coming along with doing something, if you want shorter videos or if you like a little bit of a longer video. So this one's at, what, 35, 36 minutes, and so that's, that's a little bit longer but I don't know. I like some videos where I just can put it on and even kind of fall asleep to it while I'm taking a nap or <laughs> I don't know. So you just let me know if you like that too, or if you'd prefer that I break them up and two shorter little videos, but that is what it is today. And so it's a little bit longer one, but remember you guys just, I love you. I love you all. And thank you again so much for watching the video, just listening to me today and just supporting this journey. And remember, do what you can with what you have wherever you are. Have a great day, guys.